Good morning, Alliance of Delray. I'm Lori Benicor, Executive Vice President, and this is our Zoomcast meeting. And we have some special guests today. We'll be introducing them each as they speak. The, the first important person who's going to speak here to give a little hello to everybody is Bob Schulbaum. And I'm going to spotlight him right now. And there you go, President Bob. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome the first Alliance Zoom meeting. Uh, this will continue until such time as we're able to access our home at the, at the Delray Alliance uh, uh, facility. And so um, we, we're trying, you bear with us. Um, we will get better at it as we go along. Lori has been practicing and, um, and uh, everybody knows why we're doing this because of the uh, virus. And they're using this as a method to uh, to keep in touch with all our members. Now we have Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. We're going to spotlight him. And there he is. He's going to give us an update. Thank you so much for coming, Sheriff. Hello, Sheriff. My pleasure. Uh, thank you for uh, having me this morning. Good morning to everybody. To mm -hmm. say it's been busy is an understatement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in addition to the normal calls for service, we're also we're tasked with enforcing all of the different rules and regulations during the the, the virus epidemic here in Palm Beach County that was put out by the commission. And I'm happy to say that for the most part, the vast majority of citizens were really, really good. It complied with everything. We, we only had to issue one notice to appear to one business owner, which uh, during this whole time is incredible. So I, I wanna thank the public you know, wholeheartedly for going along with the rules. And now we're in phase one. Everybody knows that the best they can do with that, the better off we are because that'll get us to phase two. So things are going good with that. And in the meantime, now we have the protesters. Um, and things are, are going relatively good with that. Um, we have, uh, every time there's gonna be a protest, uh, we have met with the organ uh, organizers of it, laid down the ground rules, made sure that they have every opportunity that there is to you know, express their opinions in a peaceful way but let them understand that we're not going to tolerate violence. We're not going to tolerate breaking into businesses, burning cars. It's just not going to happen here. And we're going to take a very strong stance on that. And we have, uh, there was some incidents in West Palm. Uh, the sheriff's uh, office has backed up West Palm and the municipalities in all of the instances that they've had problems. So we put a quick end to what was happening in West Palm. There was a few businesses broken into, but nothing that was severe. Uh, we actually apprehended about 22 people that were involved in trying to attempt to do some larcenies. Uh, you know, the unfortunate side of it is, is the vast majority of the people that want to get their message out are very, very good people. There's just a few bad actors in there, and they're just people that, you know, want to cause a problem and basically want to go shopping for a 70-inch TV that has nothing to do with the issue that's going on. So we're, I think we're in good shape, we're in good control, um, and um, we're, we've got a handle on it. Uh, the other thing that I want to make sure that everybody knows, and, and the, the public, and especially the people at Alliance, that, you know, what happened up there should not have happened. It's horrible. Uh, I, I'm glad that the, the action was taken up there to, to arrest that officer that was involved in that misconduct. But we're, our, our training here with the deputies and most of the agency that I know we don't train for neck restraints. We don't train to put a knee on the neck. We certainly train that, you know, if you're going to resist us, we'll handcuff you, but then that's the end of it. Uh, we'll, we'll arrest you and handcuff you. And if you're injured, we'll get you the necessary medical attention immediately. That's what the policies say. Uh, when you hear the, the initials VNR, that's a vascular neck restraint. So you know what people are talking about. Um, uh, the, the policy here at the sheriff's office will, will, exclusively state that we do not use the VNR. We're not going to train in it, uh, but it's considered a deadly use of force. And of course, if a deputy is in fear of his life or fighting for his life, he'll do what he has to do to save his life. But it's not a training method. Uh, if you have to control somebody, a knee in the middle of the back is the best place to control somebody. And then once they're handcuffed, it's over with. The fight's over with. And also our policy state, if a deputy is there and he sees another deputy doing something that's inappropriate, he will stop it and report it and not just stand there and watch things happening. So I wanted to reassure you that we don't train like that. That's not how we do business. And we don't control, condone any of that. And we have very strict policies on how we 
investigate any use of force at all, how we review them, and early warning systems to make sure that if we have a deputy that is acting inappropriately, then we're going to take them off the street. So feel confident that your, your, your sheriff's office trains the right way, has the right policies in place. And again, we're going to keep you safe in your neighborhoods, protect your businesses, and at the same time, let people express their opinions. So thank you for having me here this morning. I know that your Captain Sant will be on later. Uh, the men and women at the Sheriff's Office are doing an outstanding job. They're putting in a lot of, lot of hours under stressful conditions, but they've handled themselves very, very well, and I'm, I'm sure that they will continue to do so. Thank you so much for coming, Sheriff. Thank you so much for taking your time to come to this Alliance Zoomcast. And uh, hopefully July. in the future, you'll be able to come back more. This is a pretty easy way of communicating if everybody can get online and see what's happening. Yep, I, uh, this, this makes it a lot easier when I don't have a lot of time to, to drive there to, to get on the video here and do that. So again, thank you for the Alliance's support of the deputies. They appreciate that. It's a difficult job and they need to know they're appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And right now we're going to go to Captain Zant for a local update. So we will spotlight Captain Zant. There Good morning, you. everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Huh? Just to, uh, to piggyback off what uh, our great sheriff had just mentioned, I can't begin to thank you enough. Uh, and that is from all of us here locally in District 4. Uh, the calls and the emails that I receive uh, on a daily basis are uh, pretty overwhelming. And, and rest assured, folks, uh, I'm sharing that with all the staff and in and, and the times and the challenging times that we're in today, uh, know this, it's a great feeling to have for these deputies and these staff to know the unwavering support of the community they're policing and serving, right? So I wanted to start with that. Let me move into a quick crime update. Uh, let me start with the good news. <laughs> Quarterly, we're seeing crime across the board decrease. Unfortunately, we're starting to see a little bit of slight uptick in auto burglaries. That's to be suspected. All right, we have a couple of uh, young men coming up from Broward that are taking advantage of maybe some of the, the, the civil unrest and they're opportunists. Please do, do this for me. Make sure that the, the doors are locked, the cars are locked, and please take the key fobs out of the car. Most of the signal, the, well, let me not speak in police terms, most of the stolen vehicles that we're recovering are coming out of Broward. We're recovering out of Broward. Um, let, me, uh, let me also tell you, our patrol force here, we're, 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 we're functioning at full staff. There's no ripple, there's no, there's no, there's no holes in our, in our defense here. And, and also rest assured that this, the sheriff provides us with every tool, equipment, logistical support we need. It's only a phone call away. Know that our chain of command, there's complete continuity of command. There's no, there's no ripple. No matter what happens, we're pivoting and adjusting to where the, our service delivery does not get interrupted at all. So hope that puts some calm in, in, in our communities. Uh, going on. Just know that we're going to be there, period, period. We're going to be there. And in closing, I want to tell everybody to have a fantastic summer. Uh, I'm going to have to take a little time off. Uh, so my very capable and competent Lieutenant Morales, my executive officer, he will be filling in if, uh, if and when I'm not here. And I want everybody to be safe, be healthy, but be vigilant. Okay, be vigilant. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we will, thank you very much for that update. It's always great to hear from you. Good to hear that good things are happening. We're going to now go to Spotlight Chief Anthony Tozzi to give us Fire Rescue Update. Hello, Chief Tozzi. Hello, Dr. Lori, President Bob, uh, Sheriff Bradshaw, Captain Sant, and all our invited guests and speakers. I'm glad to be here. Um, let me just start off by saying, wow, what a sheriff's office, what a sheriff's department, what an organization we have. And listen, they're our heroes too. They literally come and protect us. Uh, they do so on a daily basis. We're leaning on them currently as we speak. And uh, just, wow, I don't know what else to say. So Captain Sam, please send our thanks, my organization, to your men and women. We do appreciate everything you're doing for us. Um, you, in an abundance of caution, uh, all fire rescue facilities are still going to remain closed to the public. 
Um, we're still out there running calls. We're still seeing the COVID patients. Um, however, we have noticed a, a relatively good um, down tick, if you will, in the COVID cases. So that's a good thing. We're optimistic, but we want everybody to remain diligent and uh, use common sense and do the things that all our leaders are telling us to do, the spatial distancing and, and really just staying home uh, unless there's an absolute need to get out, probably more so now than ever. But everybody's done a great job and we're proud of our community for following the directions and keeping us all safe in the process. It truly has been an enormous team effort. I'm just gonna go over a couple things regarding a hurricane prep, because I don't know when we're gonna to get to talk again. And June 1st was the start of the hurricane season. So I'm gonna put on my little glasses here and I'm gonna read off the list so I don't miss anything. Uh, some things that we wanna start doing before the storm is securing our shutters in place. We wanna make sure we fill all our cars up with gas, get cash, stock up on hurricane supplies. Um, you wanna test your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, replace any batteries as needed. You wanna to begin to secure and bring in loose items from outside. You want to decide if you're going to stay in your home or evacuate. Um, I would hope that you could find a place in your home, a neighbor's home or family's home. Uh, that would probably be your best alternative. If you have to use a shelter, you have to use a shelter, but I'd recommend seeking other alternatives if you can. Uh, to ensure you have enough medication, you want to make sure all your prescriptions have been filled. Uh, if you're planning to leave the area, make sure you evacuate early because traffic's going to be a nightmare. And you want to gather all your hurricane supplies. Make sure you have shutters or impact glass and create, create an emergency supply kit with food and water. Uh, make sure your home address numbers are visible from the street. This is gonna help us and our partners at the Sheriff's Office if we need to come to your help to render aid. Uh, you wanna make sure you clear foliage and brush from around the home. Most commonly, the flooding we see in the neighborhoods is when palm fronds and debris clutter up the, the drainage systems there. So the more we can get off out of our yard, the better we're gonna be with the flooding. Um, you wanna make sure your pets are you can them and turn off your cell phones at a time, and if able to get a nice little battery charger in case the power does, if and when the power does go out. A uh, quick hurricane supply list. You want to make sure you have enough water for up to five days. You want to have non-perishable food for five days, a can opener, a fire extinguisher. You want to have extra clothing, shoes, and bedding for each member of the household. You want to have batteries for flashlights and radios, a first aid kit, a one-month supply of your prescription medications, again, extra cash a whistle in case you need to alert somebody if you're in, a, in an area where you can't get out uh, communication wise. You wanna have trash bags, important documents. You wanna make sure they're in Ziploc containers or a, a, an area that just won't get saturated should you have a, a roof. And uh, you wanna make sure you have all your personal supplies and the portable chargers, your pet supplies and cleaning supplies. I'm gonna send something out to Dr. Vinicor, uh, our annual hurricane supply checklist. Uh, but in closing, I just want to go over uh, how proud I am of our personnel. Um, we're just putting our stats together. We're going to be releasing our, our annual report from last year. And uh, Station 45, or in Kings Point, was the busiest station in Palm Beach County. They ran over 6,833 calls. Their engine was the busiest fire engine in Palm Beach County, running over 2,375 calls. Uh, I was over there with my command staff recently. We had a nice lunch with the crew just to show our appreciation. But uh, we do feel the appreciation. We thank everybody for the, the beautiful dishes that they've sent over and, and, the, and the, you know, the get well wishes. Um, we're here, we're still running calls and we look forward to seeing you next month. God bless. Thank you so much, Chief Tozy. Thank you. What we're gonna do now is we're going to go to our main speaker, Tommy Stroud. I'm gonna, he is the executive director of Lake Worth Drainage District. He has more than 35 years of experience in civil, environmental, and water resource engineering in the public and private sectors. Prior to joining the district, he served as the Assistant Executive Director of Operations, Maintenance, and Construction for the South Florida Water Management District. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in Oceanographic Technology from Florida Institute of Technology, and he is a professional engineer registered in the state of Florida since 1983. And today, he will be speaking on water issues and the agricultural reserve development. He'll be explaining a few, a few things about that and about the bid process that the Lake Worth Range District is handling right now. And participants that are coming and listening in can ask question. We type it in. And then if we can answer it right here after Tommy's presentation, we will do so. If not, you could, we could send you an email after explaining the, 
an answer to any questions if it's something that's going to require a lot of technical detail. So you can just send it in and our panelists will see the questions and answers. So please, Tommy Stroud, please begin your presentation and he will be using screen sharing so you'll see his PowerPoint presentation as he speaks. Thank you. Do you want me to call in? Yeah. Okay, so today's presentation uh, is gonna be on the future water supply utilization of the district's development rights on property we own and of course to address any questions. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little introduction on who we are. Uh, we're an independent special taxing district created by the Florida legislature. Uh, we're governed by a five-member board of supervisors uh, elected by landowners within the district's boundary. We cover over 200 square miles in southeastern Palm Beach County, basically from about uh, Okeechobee Road south uh, down to the Broward Palm Beach County line. We manage 500 miles of canals and rights of way. Uh, we have over 20 major water control structures that are used both for flood protection and water supply. We have an annual non ad valorem assessment currently set at $49.50 per acre or a portion uh, thereof. The assessment is the same for all landowners in the district, whether it's residential, agricultural, or commercial. In general, the average homeowner pays $49.50 per year, while larger landowners, obviously who have more acreage, would pay many times more of that amount. The assessment is determined by the district's board of supervisor, and it's used exclusively for drainage, water supply, and flood control operations. Since 1915, the district has adapted to serve the changing landscape. Obviously, when it was first created, it was predominantly wetlands. Uh, it shifted over the years to a largely agricultural uh, area. And today, as we all know, we've, we've seen a lot of that converted uh, to uh, residential and commercial uh, urban uses. Uh, the responsibility to thoughtfully plan for impacts and population growth, climate change, and other water resource management issues fall on our shoulders, and it's something we take very seriously. Uh, this means that you know, we have to diligently maintain our flood control system with timely upgrades and replacements of water control structures or reconstruction of canals. Uh, exploration and implementation of new water management technologies, as we all know, uh, with the uh, risk of climate change in our future, we're going to have to uh, deal with water in different ways. And uh, we're constantly looking uh, at that potential risk and what management scenarios we need to adopt to deal with that. And where needed, the addition of new water control structures, canals, et cetera, may be considered. Give me just a second. Uh, some of the budget considerations that we've recently been uh, thinking through and working through uh, is control structure nine replacement. It's one of the largest control structures we have. It's located on the largest canal that we manage. Uh, it, it's turned out to be a very expensive process and it's one that based on the current uh, budget uh, considerations with the uh, potential economic downturn associated with COVID-19, we've postponed uh, the replacement of that water control structure. Um, we continue to rehabilitate our, and harden our canal networks. Um, we've recent, we're looking to update the hydrologic simulation of our drainage system, which is a, the model that, that helps us understand how the system operates. We're continuing to enhance the automated uh, operation of our water control system. Uh, several years ago, we installed a remote control telemetry system um, that automatically controls water levels, not too dissimilar from how the thermostats on our air conditions control the temperature in our 
residences and buildings. Uh, you can see on the right hand side of this slide uh, before and after uh, photograph of uh, the system before it was a, exclusively a manual operation. People would drive out all times of day and night, read gauges like you see on that before uh, photograph of a staff gauge. They would record the water level and if it reached a certain threshold, they would then drive to the structure that it was uh, closest and manually operate the structure. Today, all of that's done via telemetry communications and computer automation. And you can see in the bottom, we can even look at the status of the system from our cell phones uh, in real time. So it's dramatically uh, reduced uh, the time for us from the time we make a decision until that decision has been uh, acted upon, it's reduced it from hours down to minutes. Uh, we also have a hazard mitigation fund uh, for storm recovery and droughts. And in, in the event uh, we get hit by a major hurricane, not unlike the one that hit the Bahamas last year. If we have significant damage, this hazard mitigation fund is a way for us to pay for uh, the, the recovery of our system. And we participate with South Florida Water Management District and Corps of Engineers in regional water uh, supply and regional water quality projects. And I'm just going to take a minute just to kind of explain where our water comes from and what we do with it. Uh, this uh, map here, you'll see the red arrows. Um, we have two sources of water that we uh, pull from, regional sources. The first is there right in the middle of the map, Water Conservation Area 1, but most people know it more commonly as the Arthur R. Marshall Loxahatchee National Wildlife Refuge. By our permit with the state of Florida, that's our primary source of water. However, when water levels in the conservation areas get low, we turn to Lake Okeechobee as a backup water supply. And you can see the red arrows there uh, that show you the path that water takes when it comes down uh, from Lake Okeechobee uh, and then comes in through Loxahatchee in the C-51 uh, into our system. And there, each of those little smaller areas is a pump station that we use to pull the water out of those canals and pump into uh, our system. You'll notice in that tan area that, that is the Lake Work Drainage District, you'll see some little green circles and ellipses. Well, those are actual utility well fields. And those well fields go down several hundred feet into the aquifer, pull fresh water out of the aquifer and transmit it through the various uh, utilities, city utility systems uh, to our homes and businesses. It relies on the water levels in our canal system for those utility well fields to function. If we aren't maintaining water levels regionally within our district, then the water levels uh, in those well fields will drop precipitously and dangerously. If you go to the next slide, it, it, it's an illustration that mainly shows what, what we're protecting. We're, mon we're managing the water table there that you see, but you see my cursor which is represented by this dashed line. The threat we all face is from the ocean, salt water, which is generally heavier than fresh water, has a tendency to want to move inland. The higher we hold our water levels, the more force that pushes against that. In a drought, a major drought, if we didn't have water in Lake Okeechobee or the conservation area, our groundwater tables would fall and that would allow salt water to move inland underground and potentially contaminate uh, those well fields. And, and that's, a, that's a, a battle we fight uh, every day, uh, literally, particularly in the dry season or during droughts. So Lake Okeechobee obviously is a very important source of water for us and, and we are very active uh, in working with the Corps of Engineers and Water Management District over that. 
However, there's some things that are putting that source of water at risk from our perspective. The Corps of Engineers is looking at uh, establishing a, what they call a temporary deviation to their operational protocol. Uh, the concern they have is that when the lake gets high and they make major discharges to the Cloosehatchee and St. Lucie estuaries, the nutrients that are in the water in Lake Okeechobee tend to form harmful algal blooms in these coastal estuaries. And those algal blooms can be dangerous uh, to, to public health uh, because the toxin the algae creates, it gets airborne and can have respiratory and other, other effects. So the Corps is looking to lower the stages in Lake Okeechobee. Well, that in essence discharges or dumps the water that we rely on in the dry season uh, for water supply. So that's an area of concern. Uh, there are some legal protections for water uh, that the Corps right now believes they're not obligated to preserve and, and we're having a, a, a very vigorous public debate on that. Uh, and in addition to that, there are water storage reservoirs that were planned to be constructed that are now on the list to be deauthorized. So our concern is that the water that we rely on in Lake Okeechobee may be discharged or moved to another source and the mitigating uh, activities, new water storage reservoirs are no longer on the books. So we feel at that point, we have to then look at alternative water supplies uh, that we uh, fund and, a, and, a, and pay for. So when we look at the funding aspects of that, we, we look at the availability of funds that we currently have, which is, would be the use of our hazard mitigation funds. But as I mentioned earlier, to use that, it would deplete uh, our reserves to deal with major storm events. And obviously we don't want to take that risk. Uh, we could postpone capital improvements, which I've mentioned we're having to do in the case of control line. Uh, we could increase the taxes, our assessment, uh, which today, as I mentioned, is $49.50. The last increase that we made was several years ago. We increased that rate by $1.50. However, to construct one of these large reservoir systems, uh, we would have to increase our ad valorem assessment by more than 25%, uh, which is obviously a huge impact uh, to uh, taxpayers, particularly uh, in this current economic context of COVID-19 and, and the, the large uh, number of uh, unemployed that have recently gone on those roles. So we, we're looking at alternative revenue sources to help us fund major projects in the future. Um, you know, when you look at the land use rules, uh, lands that are owned in fee simple by prop property owners carry development rights or you, you, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do the next slide, there we go. Or uh, development rights, uh, that are part of that, that property. And this includes canal rights of way owned in be simple by the district. Uh, development units are marketable to developers who are seeking to purchase development rights or units in order to transfer them to another site. It concentrates development in the ag reserve to certain areas, hopefully decreasing urban sprawl and protecting valuable farmland. The transfer of development right is a legal and accepted practice that has been used in the Ag Reserve for more than 20 years. And it's not the first time that public lands have been sold uh, for development rights in the Ag Reserve. Uh, the district conducted uh, an inventory of its properties, which is estimated at approximately 313 acres. And you can see on the map to your right, it, uh, you can see in purple those canals uh, which uh, fit that, that description. Uh, we've met with county officials, community and civic leaders and groups to explain what we're doing and why. And we have an independent appraisal has been conducted and the value of each acre development unit was established at $65,000 an acre. We used a, a public bidding process uh, to provide transparency to the public so they can see what we're doing and how we're doing it. And at the April 
2020 meeting, the district board set a minimum uh, equal to or greater than uh, amount of $70,000 an acre, uh, more than 8% above the current praise value as a minimum bid. So that would set the total value of those 313 acres at approximately $22 million. To help us, to help us address the threats to the region's freshwater supply, uh, climate, change and aging flood control infrastructure and potential change in water deliveries from Lake Okeechobee. The district will invest funds from the sale and mission critical infrastructure improvements that will prevent floods, address droughts, and, and enhance overall water supply. At a time when families are facing sustained economic uncertainty, and, and Lake Worth Drainage District serves around 800,000 residents, which is about half the population of Palm Beach County. It, from our perspective, it makes sense to explore alternative revenue streams and to generate revenue by leveraging assets that we have, the land that we own, rather than raising taxes. Uh, the sale of development rights presents an opportunity for our taxpayers to leverage uh, this asset in managing uh, regional water supply. As far as the current status is concerned, to determine if there is any uh, interest in purchasing the district's development right of way, we issued a formal request for bids, uh, which was recently advertised. We're going to have the bid opening later today at 2 p.m., and the results will be published on our website. At its monthly meeting on June 10th, uh, Lake Ward Drainage District Board will consider awarding the bid to the respondent that submits the highest uh, bid. Ultimately, uh, this approval will be needed from Palm Beach County, uh, from either the staff or the commissioners. Uh, having a willing buyer in place before seeking full approval from the county demonstrates certainty with the sale and avoids a lengthy counter county procedure and significant investment of time and resources if the property had no uh, interested buyer. And with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. I don't know. So my question is, uh, I, uh, you understand the alliances. Uh, we, you know, we've got on record that we don't, we don't like to see increase in uh, density or intensity in the agriculture reserve. That means like no more units and, and also the, um, commercial uh, square footage we don't want to see that increase anytime soon due to the uh, the the two years of of agriculture reserve roundtables that did change some things so that but there's what we've always been up against is unintended consequences in the agriculture reserve and this may be one of them and it may need to be determined through um, the county's uh, legal their their attorneys and your attorneys Correct. we understand that but the what i'd like you to address is the things that i've heard about the concern for say our condominiums if mm -hmm. we explain as an engineer can this happen? What is, is there a threat that they won't get water to upper oh. levels when, <laughs> with the, can you yeah. just work on what, what's the consequences for the residents? Yeah, let, let, yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, so it, it, what happens if, if we don't have water in Lake Okeechobee or some other source to maintain our canal levels? As I mentioned before, canal levels would drop salt water would tend to start moving in. Now, the district and the Corps of Engineers and Lake Worth Drainage District, we do everything we can to try to avoid that. One of the measures that is taken uh, early in a drought is we go into what is called a water shortage. And the water management district has very specific restrictions on the use of water. Your residences, residences have a experience that when they tell you you can only water your yard on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? It, it, it's a limit on water availability and water uses. They also can close down uh, car washes and other fountains and other uh, ancillary water uses. Another 
impact, which you just mentioned is, they also ask the utilities to reduce the line pressures in their distribution systems. Now, if you are you know, in a normal single family residence or your business is in a, a, sh a shopping center on the first floor, all that will happen is when you turn on your tap, less water is going to come out. It's, an, it's a, obviously a bit of a nuisance, but it's part of what you do to reduce your water usage. However, for multi-story buildings, those line pressures are critical for fire protection and, and other, other uses. So a lot of times communities will have to come into the water management district and request variances to those pressure reductions. Uh, so it, it, it increases risk in other areas, fire protection being one of them. Does that answer your question, Dr. Ben? Yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that that does answer that. And and uh, what what are these? What you're planning in the future mm -hmm. for extra wells or whatever you're looking for? Would that alleviate the situation? This is what you're yeah. expecting to use the money for to to do these things. What, yes. What would that be used for? Yes. In other words, there are a number of of projects uh, that we're currently evaluating and, and we're working closely with uh, South Florida Water Management District and Corps of Engineers on this. Um, but we're looking to have a source of water in case that water is not available, as I mentioned earlier, in Lake Okeechobee or through some other project that we, we were counting on, which is no longer going to be constructed. So we're talking to the Water Management District as an example uh, right now about uh, utilizing uh, aquifer storage and recovery wells that they constructed several years ago. Um, they are not using them. They're, they're really just sitting idle, but that would be a source of water uh, that we could use uh, in, in, a, in a severe drought. And so we're investigating the potential of working cooperatively with the water management district and starting to utilize those aquifer storage and recovery wells as an additional source of water. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. We don't have any questions right here. I think perhaps it's because this is so technically involved. There's so many moving parts. Yes. There's so many things for us to ruminate on and think about, and we don't know even if you know what's going to be happening with your bidding process if there's going to be right. interest right and uh, so uh, please keep us informed rosemary does a fantastic job <laughs> yes there she is in the background <laughs> of keeping us informed and sending your newsletters to the uh, to us and then we put that out to our membership so uh, l maybe in in the future you can come back and give us an update absolutely but, for right now, thank you so much for everything. And we're going to cancel your spotlight now and okay. you can go back to saving our water supply. Thank you. Thank I really, you so much. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, Bob, do you have anything else to say before we end this meeting, which actually went pretty well for, uh, for our Zoom cast meeting and we'll be doing more of these? Well, we're, we're, the only thing I have to say is that uh, we're learning at the same time that the membership is learning. And if we do a couple of meetings down the road here, uh, it will become uh, clearer and more uh, distinct and we have to get a better uh, communication. Anybody who know how to uh, click, click in on us and we hope that uh, the membership listing will tell um, tell the, their, their members that um, uh, we look forward to them joining us. Thank you so much. And the uh, one thing that we um, we will say is that next month on for the July, I do believe it's the July 1st meeting, we're going to have a candidates forum. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will end this meeting now and we'll see you next month. <laughs>